Willa, in English at least. We are also doing Spanish updates on this storm on the Force 13 channel. It's a major Category 4 hurricane that's still strengthening at this time, with winds of 140 miles per hour and a pressure of 946 millibars. The storm is approaching the western coast of Mexico at 6 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time this October 21st. A stage 5 on the CDPS scale, devastating consequences likely when the storm strikes in a few days. At present it's 212 miles from Manzanillo in Mexico, 249 miles from Preda Vallata, 310 from Tepic and 396 from Mazatlan, those coastal locations that are likely to be impacted by this storm. A hurricane watch in effect for San Blas to Mazatlan and a tropical storm warning for Playa Perula to San Blas, mainly the western area there. Uh, and those conditions along the coastline there are expected to deteriorate over the next few days. As we look at the model over the next uh, of the beginning part of this coming week on the GFS, you can see the storm continuing towards the north could even become a Category 5 in the next few hours leading on to the next few days and then swinging eastward into the coast of Mexico inland and eventually ending up somewhere on the Atlantic side by the end of the week. Uh, this storm could deliver huge amounts of rainfall but what's more it could produce massive winds and storm surge over the next few days. Uh, a lot of people will obviously be comparing this storm to Patricia. Uh, that's not going to be the case, not quite. Uh, but with sea surface temperatures of 28 degrees, Category 5 status can't be ruled out. And I would say this storm reaching Category 5 would be a greater feat than Kenner was in 2002, owing to slightly lesser sea surface temperatures actually than Kenner had way back then. Almost to the day, by the way. Over the next few days, this is what we expect there. Another look at the winds as the storm moves in there. Could make landfall as a category 2 or 3, possibly even higher at a worst case scenario. But we'd expect with the geography of the area that the storm would weaken, hopefully significantly before it strikes land. But we're still expecting significant hurricane force winds. And obviously, if it does get a category 5, it could then bring on a category 5 storm surge no matter how strong the storm still is by the time it lands. Tropical Storm Force wind percentages there. Uh, Preta Baeto at 93%. That's on one of those islands right in the um, crosshairs for this storm. 70%. Uh, Mazatlan, the only the highest percentage on the mainland there. So this is what we expect in the intensity models over the next few days. Again, you can see here what the models are saying. They're still taking their time to catch up with what's actually happened, transpired in the last few hours. Wind shear looks somewhat decent, expected to remain low but rising steadily. Sea surface temperatures again around 28 degrees Celsius and relative humidity on a slight downward trend. You can see there the landfall location anywhere from Mazatlan to a little bit further south. Uh, and this is how the storm's been looking in these latest satellite frames over the last about an hour or so. As daylight has been slowly fading over the storm, there's the water vapor imagery. This is from the GOES-17 satellite, uh, which has the most accurate depiction of this storm, even though it doesn't have the fastest imagery, because the one-minute GOES-16 imagery is also over the storm right now. Um, but you can see how the eye has continued to clear in those latest frames and the northern eye wall in particular has been consolidating around what is already a well-developed southern.